Friends, uh, welcome to this worship service this morning. It is so good that you were able to join us today as we celebrate Easter. Um, I think we'd all acknowledge that we are living in a different time right now. There are changes about. And so we acknowledge this. This is not the way that we would have planned Easter. But yet we gather together no matter where you are, in whatever context you are in, to celebrate that Jesus is risen. Jesus has not changed from today, from yesterday to, to tomorrow. We can trust in his truths. We can embrace his promises. For today, he is alive. Jesus is risen. And if you were here, you would be responding, he is risen indeed. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. So today we rejoice in a God who loves us, in a God who forgives us. Today we marvel at the wonder of a stone rolling, being rolled away. Uh, we remember the cloud of witnesses who have proclaimed his name for generations. We proclaim that Jesus is Lord, his steadfast love endures forever. He is trustworthy, he is present, and he is here today with us. So you'll notice we were in the heritage room this morning. I hope the fireplace gave it away. There have been six of us in the room today. Uh, we have been uh, making this, this, getting the service ready and working. Uh, we have Al behind the camera. We have Jody uh, working sound. Uh, we have Layton on the cajon. Uh, my name is Kevin. And we have Matt and Kristen who are leading us in song today. It is so good to have Kristen uh, worshiping with us and leading us in worship and seeing her here in her elements, praising and worshiping God. So let's call, I call you this morning to worship. Jesus said that he comes that we might have life and that we might have it abundantly. Whoever follows him will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So let us sing knowing that we are in the light because he has come up out of the darkness and he, from the grave he has arose. Let's worship. Sorrow and dead in my sin, lost without hope, with no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested, in my life began. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance When death was arrested in my life began Oh, your grace so free washes over
about a month ago, we were gathered together. We were engaging on a, a new direction in terms of reinventing our Sunday mornings to connect and belong in more significant ways. That seems like an eternity ago, I know. Uh, but uh, part of that direction setting initiative have people sharing their faith stories and we didn't get to hear from them. And so I thought for this Easter Sunday, I would ask them a few pointed questions uh, to help guide their thoughts, and then I'll, I'll put them together and I'll share them with you this morning. And so the questions that I asked them was, how has God been working in your life in these last few weeks as we've experienced change? Uh, to tell us a story about how Easter and the resurrection has been significant for you uh, in the past. And then the third question was, what does Easter mean for you today? Given that the church, uh, maybe our family gatherings, the ways that we would celebrate are just different, what does that look like for you today? And so here are their responses. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. When Kevin asked me to do this little segment, um, and he sh I got the questions, and the one question was to talk about um, a story about the resurrection or Easter um, that was significant to me. And little memories came to me, not necessarily significant, but uh, my mom sewing matching dresses for my sisters and I to have for Easter morning. I think about the traditional Easter meal, it's my favorite holiday meal of ham and my grandma's mustard sauce and fried potatoes and boiled eggs. But I thought, mm, those are not the significant things. Then I thought of a Good Friday a number of years ago when we got home from church and I could see that my son had been impacted by the service. And after some conversation, it was evident um, that the death of Jesus for him was significant. And together we prayed as he accepted the love and forgiveness of Jesus for himself personally. Um, I think about the death of my parents 
and I think about how important the resurrection is to me knowing that I'm going to see them again because Jesus died and rose. I think of my favorite Easter hymn, He Lives, and it's, the words go something like this, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow ways. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. So the significance of the resurrection is that I have someone with me to navigate life. And as our world is trying to navigate this whole global pandemic, I have met so many people filled with fear, filled with the fear of losing their jobs, the strain of finances that are dwindling, um, a fear of illness. Some of them are terrified of dying. Others are facing the fear of isolation. I don't have to fear any of that because I serve a risen savior. Easter is the most important time of year for me and, and, and for, for us as Christians because without that day, our, our faith doesn't really have much to stand on. Um, Christ's death and resurrection is the foundation of what we have built our life upon and what the Bible is centered around. And it is, it is the pivotal point in history that, that without it, we, we don't really have anything yet. Yet because of it, we have everything. So even though the, the gatherings might not happen, won't happen, and the services won't happen, that truth remains. And even though myself as an, as an extrovert who loves people and enjoys community, um, that's a huge part of it. Um, the, the, tr the truth that, that lies in the gospel doesn't change, even in the midst of uncertainty and, and sadness and, and, uh, and darkness. So I have been blessed to be able to focus on that and to find um, life and hope um, I know that this isn't going to last forever, that we will see each other again in person. Wow, I'm going to cry. Um, but yeah, it, it really, it's really hard. Um, Easter is a time of new life with, with the coming of spring and with the resurrection of Jesus.
in the last couple weeks, I have been home, which is in McCreary, not Winnipeg, so I'm a little farther away than that I'd like to be from a lot of you, but um, I guess in this time we're, we're as far away as the internet is. Um, so this is my home church. Say hi, McCreary Gospel. And uh, yeah, I've been asked to, to share a little bit about how I'm doing in this time and what I've been doing and how it looks differently than usual. Now, I am lucky that for me, this time of isolation and uncertainty has led me back to my parents' farm, which um, aside from me being home, hasn't changed very much. Um, we are in the middle of lambing and had a calf yesterday and there's piglets running around and like I said aside from me being there life hasn't really changed so even with the uncertainty and the changes to the world um, life kind of continues on as normal well until you go to the grocery store or look at the news or remember that we can't gather together as the body of Christ as we usually do on Sunday mornings, which for me has been the hardest thing. Um, and like I said before, at this time, it's it's almost harder than, than anything we've been through in, in some ways, but, but like I said, maybe an opportunity for some more reflection and hidden gems of, of opportunity to, to see God. Um, it's not hard for me to see God's life and love and, and joy and provision in the lambs that we have, in the fact that that we can have space to, to enjoy creation and enjoy life in this springtime, you know, even though we've had third and fourth winters. Um, and and I'm glad to, to be with my family. There has been many ways that God has worked in my life over these past few weeks. Um, for starters, the good thing about not getting to go anywhere is that you have a lot of time at home, and I've been able just to really dive into the Word and spend 30 to 45 minutes each day uh, reading and in prayer, and God has just been showing me about how there's this illusion of control. I never had control in the first place, even when the world wasn't shut down. I didn't have control a year ago. I never had control when I was young. God was always in control and he had a plan. And so just really understanding what it means to trust in God and what it means to put all of my, my faith and my hope and my stresses and my burdens and give them to him and surrender. And this has been a season of disappointments, as most of us have. Um, things being cancelled, um, activities not getting to do. Um, for me, I had to cancel a trip that I was planning on taking to Bolivia, which was really hard. I lost my job. I moved back home. And all of these things that I was really looking forward to all of a sudden weren't happening anymore. And it was really hard for me to just find the silver linings within all these things. And so I started to do a thankfulness journal, which has really been um, helpful in this time. And God's really been showing me what it means to be thankful. And so I've been writing at least three things a day about how God has worked in my life that day, what I can be thankful for, and every day um, just being in a posture of thankfulness and one something that's really funny is that I was writing down in my journal about my thankfulness journal and I misspelled thankfulness and I wrote thankful mess which is totally true as we're within this mess and it's important to be thankful um, because God is our provider and sometimes we don't see it but if we take time to be thankful we can see how God has provided in so many ways and I'm already seeing that where I was approved for help um, the emergency benefit fund and I have been able to pick up a few extra private tutoring shifts and just all of these things that God has just continually um, saying Kelsey if you trust in me it's gonna be okay and I'm gonna take care of you at the start of this whole pandemic and a good way through it, I was at real peace with all of it, doing a great job of trusting God. 
After all, I had a job in healthcare, so I wasn't going to lose that. If anything, I'd be busier than ever. And in terms of social isolation, I'm pretty much a homebody anyway, so I didn't think that was going to be a big deal. And it wasn't, for the most part. Then all of a sudden, this last week, we had a glitch. And I wish I could say that when the glitch came, I just had total trust in God and, and carried on that way. But there was a moment where I wondered what God was doing. See, we're expecting our first grandbaby, and this baby was supposed to be born June 4th. Um, but this last week, due to complications, there's a good chance, we're told, that this baby is going to arrive early, significantly early, be a preemie. And in my heart, I say, God, what are you doing? My kids are so young. They need our support. They need us there just for a normal birth, never mind a preemie. And how are we supposed to be there for them amidst this COVID virus um, where we can't even have contact with them? And then I was reminded about something I had read um, in a book by Max Licato about You'll Get Through This. And in it, he writes about difficult times that it won't be painless. It may not be quick, but God will use this mess for good. And in the meantime, don't be foolish or naive, but don't despair either. For with God's help, you will get through this. I reached out to friends um, all around me, to family, asking them to pray. And as I did that, I realized I could trust God. He had this. And he does. I think of Jesus in the garden as he looked to God in a moment of isolation as no one on earth could possibly comprehend what he was going to have to endure. As he cried out to God saying, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering from me and yet wanting to do his will. The agony he must have experienced physically and mentally as he was completely separated from God as he took on my sin. Talk about complete isolation. All right, we as a church, we continue to seek ways to keep you informed, to keep you uh, connected, or hopefully to help you connect, and to encourage you. Uh, as we can to be together face to face. Uh, last week we had our first congregational video call. Uh, it was incredibly encouraging to me. I've heard from others that it was an encouraging time. We are going to do that again uh, Sunday, maybe today that you're watching this at 11.30. You will have received a link to the, the Zoom conference call through our email. Uh, through the, the newsletter. Uh, hopefully you can check that. If you aren't on the newsletter email list, uh, please contact the church office and we'll get you connected for that. Uh, have you been to the, the church website recently? Um, you can find updates in terms of our response to COVID-19. Uh, you can find links to our Instagram and Facebook and YouTube pages. Uh, you can also find great resource material to f keep yourself connected. We have a resources and connections page where you'll find links to things like Right Now Media, where we as a church subscribe to a great platform that has incredible ways to encourage you in your faith and to grow in your journey with Jesus. Uh, there's also a prayer request card that's on that uh, website, Connections and Resources tab. Look for that if you are in need of prayer. Uh, and you can also, if you're looking to join a small group, there's uh, ways to connect with our small group coordinators and they'd love to get back to you in terms of joining a small group at Fort Gary. Uh, our website is also, also has a place to, to give. We're just so thankful for your generosity and for your willingness to continue to partner in the ministries of the church. We continue to find new and innovative ways to uh, just to share the light of Jesus and to be the church and to also encourage one another. So in saying that, um, we're just super thankful. We've set up uh, various ways to give, whether that's PayPal on the website or you can mail in. Uh, a donation or you can drop it off at the church. There are staff members here at times. Uh, you can ring the doorbell when you come and if one of us is here, we'll definitely come and meet you at the front door. And so with that, let us gather all of these things up and let us pray uh, together this morning.
morning, I offer you a prayer that is from the Anabaptist prayer app called Take Our Moments and Our Days. It has scriptures in morning and evening time that are helped to, help to guide us or help have been encouraging for me to guide me in my daily prayer walk. So, and this morning I invite you to a call and response type prayer. I will read or the words I say in your, in your mercy and I'd invite you to respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Okay? All right, let's pray together. We lift up our eyes to the heavens and we look at the earth beneath. The salvation of the Lord will be forever. God's deliverance will never be ended. God of peace, you are making all things new. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. You satisfy us with steadfast love. We pray for ourselves and those dear to us. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. You come to us in many and various ways, and we pray for our community, and we pray for our neighbors. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. You are our strength, you are our song. We pray for the church in all places that we may be one. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. You hate wickedness and you love righteousness. We pray for the world that you reign, your reign may come and your will will be done on earth. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We offer you other concerns that we carry in our hearts. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. You are a generous and giving God. Lord, at this time when there is so much need around us, help us to care for one another, to be gracious for one another. Teach us to have a heart of gratitude and bless our gifts, our time, our money, our resources, just so that it would do your kingdom work. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. God of glory beyond our comprehension, you exalt the humble, you raise the lowly. Give us grace to know the mind of Jesus, that we may follow him through death and into new life. We glorify your name, Lord. Amen. Um, Easter is going to look a little different. In my home church, we're actually doing a drive-in service. It's a very small church, as you can see, one service with like 35 to 40 people on a regular Sunday, and we're going to have a drive-in with a radio station and um, a small team doing music and my pastor preaching. And uh, although it'll be um, still separate and a lot different than usual, the fact that we'll be together is uh, is really encouraging and that we're trying to find a way despite the uh the stuff going on so i'm looking forward to that i i was prepared to tell you more of my my walk with with god and my testimony but i think that in this just hearing from people that um are are living despite the uncertainty and are, are trying to find ways to to come together and to live and love together, I think is really, really beautiful. So I hope this has been encouraging. I, I miss you all very, very much and pray that in this Easter season, you would not focus on the sorrow, but to find the joy hidden, even if it's really, really, really covered. Um, enjoy the opportunity to talk to people that you might not necessarily talk to all the time with with Facebook and all the social media and video conferencing things and and use this to uh, to grow together Psalm 18 verse 1 and 2 have become important verses to me over the last week they say I love you Lord you are my strength the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the strength of my salvation and my stronghold. 
So this Easter, I may not be going to church dressed in a beautiful spring dress, or enjoying the sounds of an Easter choir, or having dinner with extended family, but I am still able to celebrate. I'm able to celebrate the fact that I have a risen Savior who is here to navigate life with me. I will never be alone. A blessed Easter to you. Throughout the season of Lent, we have been on a journey. Our Lent theme has been on messy people, merciful God, examining how different people experience God's mercy in the midst of their lives, in the midst of their mess. This exploration of stories and encounters with Jesus has been a purposeful journey toward identifying our own need for Jesus, examining the story of how God's, God meets people in their mess in scripture gives us a mirror into our own stories, the difficulties that grip us and burden us, the ways in which we can become focused on the wrong thing and miss Jesus who is right before us, facing our indebtedness to God, encountering our fears and our worries, sitting in our longing for hope. These themes from scripture are universal. They speak to our own experience, different time, same kind of mess. And the sermons also spoke to the different ways that God's mercy enters that mess and draws us toward God. The redemptive and creative work of God was at work in each sermon, nudging us to greater understanding and response to the love of our Lord. Each sermon was taking us further down the Lenten journey, whose destination is always the cross, always the resurrection. So that leaves us today with one more story to tell of mess and mercy. Today, Easter, is the ultimate story of messy people, merciful God. Because Easter marks the day that mercy got the final say. This is the day that mercy met the mess and overcame it. Through scripture, we can see that God's mercy was, of course, at work in the world since the beginning. But it is through Jesus that we see mercy conquer human brokenness in such a way that washes over every single person for all time. One final say. In a course I took on Christian hope, our professor drew this Venn diagram to describe how Christians can understand our location in the story of God, mercy, and humanity. The first circle is the old era, which was defined by the fall of humanity into sin and us living in our broken state. This, the story of this era is told through the Old Testament. It reveals a pattern of our brokenness and God's attempts to bring us into covenant relationship with no lasting success on the part of humanity. The second circle is the new era, which is the future era where Christ has promised to come again and bring the fullness of God's kingdom to earth. We have not yet seen this era, but we wait in anticipation of it. The space between these two circles, then, is the place that we find ourselves, the you are here space. We are still experiencing the reality of our broken world from the old era, but with Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we are also overlapping with the hope of the new era. We exist in this in-between space, aware of the hope we hold and the presence of God's kingdom, but still tucked a little bit into the old era. This middle ground was ushered in by Easter, by the death and resurrection of Jesus, by Jesus entering so fully into the mess of the world that he died at its hands, and by the mercy of God revealing that its power was beyond anything that humans could do, beyond death itself. Mercy met the mess and overcame it. So even though we exist in an in-between space, which for many of us can be a difficult place to be, we locate our hope 
in the Easter story. The fact that it changed the landscape of how mercy met our mess and the fact that it promises us a lasting hope that we can look ahead to and hold on to. We find ourselves in another in-between space today, right now. When I picture Easter, I picture a full sanctuary. I picture many of us dressed up a little bit more than the usual, uh, uh, than the usual Sunday. I picture a mood of celebration, joy and love. I picture baptisms and rejoicing, upbeat songs and feeling a sense of connection to the people around me. Because today is the single most important day in the Christian calendar. Today is our day. And yet, we are not in our building sanctuary. We're probably not dressed up. And we are not together in the, na the ways that we normally would be. I don't know about you, but for me, there is a bit of grief that is accompanying this reality. We are currently experiencing a messy situation, a pandemic that has interrupted our lives in ways that most of us have never experienced before. And we are waiting for it to pass. We look to hope ahead of us, but we recognize that we are still very much in the mess. As I prepared for this morning, I wondered if I should focus my energy on Holy Saturday, on the space between Good Friday and Easter, and compare that to how we feel as we are in waiting for hope ahead in this pandemic. But as I impact that thought, or at least my approach to that thought, I realized it was pretty inaccurate. Because the hope for Holy Saturday was found in uh, the fact that Easter was to come, but the hope that we all get to have right now is in the fact that Easter has already happened. So even though we are in this waiting period, hoping for a pandemic to end, we still have the hope of Easter to accompany us through because Easter did happen. We don't have to wait for it. We are Easter people. We are people who know this very important truth. Mercy met the mess and overcame it. As we know from the pandemic, mercy did not eliminate the mess. We are still sitting in it every single day. But mercy overcame it in the way that it made it secondary, of secondary importance, next to the reality that our hope extends beyond any mess that we can face. Does that mean that my grief over the loss of our community gathering at Easter is unimportant? No. Our grief, our anxieties, our worries, and the pain that we might be feeling right now are important and they are fair. Please don't ever hear me belittling our difficulties. I know that I am struggling through this re new reality that we find ourselves in, and I know many others are. But the point is that in the midst of them, we can experience hope at all times because we are Easter people. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in 2 Corinthians. We know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. We look ahead and we can see hope. We know that no matter what sorrows or even what joys we experience moment to moment, the hope that lays ahead of us is greater. So where does that leave us in the in-between space, in the moment that we find ourselves in right now? I would suggest to us today that as Easter people, we are uniquely equipped to carry the hope we have for the future into our every day. This future isn't, uh, this future hope, sorry, isn't meant to make us check out of the present, but rather to engage with it very uniquely 
in such a way that spreads that hope now. This past week, Council met, and we talked about what our church mission is during this pandemic. It's easy to feel stuck as we comply with social distancing measures. I personally feel very stuck at home. But this context actually offers us unique opportunity. Many of us are spending more time in our physical communities than we normally would be. Imagine if each of us, while bearing safety and social distancing requirements in mind, were to find creative ways to reach out in our neighborhoods and share hope how amazing could the ripple effect be within our city? Imagine 300 people, each in their own area, actively spreading hope. Every day I see images and stories that inspire hope, though things are hard. What can we as the church, as Easter people, be doing to contribute to that? Perhaps it's uplifting notes in your window. Perhaps it's delivering groceries to someone who can't on their own. Perhaps it's sending a text or making a phone call to connect meaningfully. Perhaps it's offering prayer to those around you. Perhaps it's checking in on those you know who are working the front lines in our healthcare system, or the teachers who are trying to inspire and educate students from far away. Perhaps it's sharing our services and videos to someone who just might find them encouraging. The options are plenty, even if our mobility, even if our ability to see each other face to face are both limited. The church, Easter people, are uniquely positioned to bring hope into a place that is feeling void of it. How can we bring God's mercy into the mess? Today, Easter marks the point where God's mercy met the mess and overcame it. With that hope firmly fixed in our hearts, how will we live into it? Go and be Easter people. Amen. In response, I invite you to join with us on Christ the Lord is Risen Today. If you happen to have a hymnal in your living room like we do, then you can turn to 373 and we're doing verses 1 and 3. offer you a benediction and ascending as we go from this worship space. On this Easter day, may the God of peace, who brought back his son Jesus from the dead, who is our great shepherd and who is our savior, who makes us complete in everything good, may we do God's will and may we through Jesus, to whom God be the glory forever and ever, be at peace. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.